prolific hymn writer Francis Ridley Havergal in our opening song writes about the truth of God that is ultimate and unchanging. Fierce may be the conflict, strong may be the foe, but the king's own army none can overthrow. Round his standard ranging, victory is secure, for his truth unchanging makes the triumph sure. Humanity has long debated the subject of ultimate truth. Does it really exist? If so, who really knows what it is? Down through the centuries, individuals and societies have searched for truth in their quest for understanding and meaning in life. Jesus claimed quite rightly, the truth will set you free. And this is a statement that is both profound and true. Many philosophers and teachers have expounded on the subject. Some have said, here is the truth, or this is the truth. None have said, I am the truth. More than once in the gospel, Jesus makes this extraordinary claim. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Art thou the king of the Jews? Sayest thou this thing of thyself? Or did others tell it thee of me? Am I a Jew? Thine own nation and the chief priests have delivered thee unto me. What hast thou done? My kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, then would my people fight that I should not be delivered to the Jews. Art thou a king then? Thou sayest that I am a king. To this end was I born, and for this cause came I into the world, that I should bear witness unto the truth. Everyone that is of the truth heareth my voice. What is truth? Here is the most dramatic account in the trial of Jesus. We suspect that Pilate well knew that the charges the Jews brought against Jesus were nothing more than a series of lies, and he knew that Jesus was completely innocent. It seems that it may well have been that Pilate was deeply impressed with Jesus, and he asks him, what is truth? Perhaps not out of cynicism, but rather one who was perhaps a little weary in life. Perhaps there is a little bit of pilot in all of us, and often we cry in exasperation, what is truth? How great the darkness, how deep the need, how vast the problems of indifference, hate and greed. A world rejecting the truth once known and slipping down into a nightmare of its own. Truth and 
name powerful and sword. Often the flame its single gleam diffuse, and let my spirit be the light that you. From soul to soul, a million tiny flames expand into a whole. How strange the truth is when joined as one, and what a miracle the shining could be. It could transform the darkness that we know and clearly light the way mankind must try to go. I am the candle of the Lord and truth and love more powerful than sword, or fan the flame, its single gleam diffuse, and let my spirit be the light that you The response of Pilate to the claim of Jesus that he is the embodiment of truth has a ring of irony and bitterness about it, and humanity has re-echoed the same sentiment down through the years. What is truth? It may well be that behind the irony is a desperation to really know an authentic truth that just somehow seems to elude us. Many hold that truth is subjective, that my truth is as real and as valid as yours, even though they may differ. As much as humanity would like to embrace that concept, it is not real or authentic, for truth then becomes fluid and malleable, depending on the person observing it. Common sense tells us that somewhere there must be some basic and fundamental authority that determines what is the real truth. This claim of Jesus is one of the most significant assertions that he makes about his identity. It declares that Jesus is not just a teacher or a prophet, but the very embodiment of truth itself. This idea, this concept of truth, is a fundamental and powerful actuality. Throughout the history of humanity, it has searched for truth, for humanity full well knew that in finding it, it would give understanding and meaning to our existence. Truth may well be a subjective thing. Ask the witnesses to any motor vehicle accident and you will probably get varying versions of events. For any society or community to operate properly, there must be a baseline for truth. Where and how we find that truth is the question we must answer. There has to be some baseline to which we all subscribe if communities and societies are to be functional. Thou art the way, none other dare I follow. Thou art the truth, and thou hast made me free.
In a conversation with his disciples regarding eternity, Thomas poses the question, Lord, we don't know where you are going, so how can we know the way? And Jesus responds, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. The assertion of Jesus to be the way, truth and life addresses the basic concerns of humanity. To know where we are going, to know an undeniable truth, to acquire the very essence of living. Such a declaration encapsulates the idea that Jesus is the source of all meaning and purpose in our lives and that in him we can find a way of understanding the world and our lives that goes beyond the superficial and the material. Right from the commencement of his ministry, Jesus came as the embodiment of complete truth. John writes, and the word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. More than once during his ministry, Jesus makes the claim to be and know ultimate truth. Scottish theologian and scholar William Barclay says that truth is not a concept, it is a person. He asserts that the ultimate source of truth is not a set of abstract ideas or principles, but rather the person of Jesus Christ. When we perceive Jesus as the ultimate truth, we need to understand that such a claim goes even beyond him. Just prior to his death, Jesus prays for his disciples and all who will follow him. He prays, make them holy by your truth. Teach them your word, which is truth. The truth that Jesus is referring to here is God's word, the Bible. In it is contained the written word of God and the truth all humanity needs to know. Here we come back to an issue we have discussed recently, the authority and veracity of the Bible. And as Christians, we cannot deviate from its ultimate authority. To do so, strips away the very basis and foundation of truth. Also in this verse, Jesus is praying that his followers will be set apart for a holy purpose through their knowledge, acceptance and commitment to him for he is the ultimate source of all truth. This truth, in turn, should transform the way they live, making them more like Christ and reflecting his love and grace to the world. To be like Jesus, this hope possesses me. In every thought and deed, this is my aim, my creed.
Unfortunately, we live in a world permeated by word spin and dubious claims, particularly at the political level. We see daily politicians worm their way around the truth by the clever use of rhetoric and word spin. Perhaps it is the nature of politics and the media reporting that makes it almost impossible to be truthful and transparent. And that in itself is a sad commentary of the society in which we now live. As you read the exchanges of Jesus in the New Testament, there are times when his honesty cost him, particularly the one we looked at earlier in his exchange with Pilate. Jesus claimed to be the embodiment of truth, a claim from which he never wavered, even in the face of death, reflects his authenticity. In a world that often seems filled with word spin and dubious claims, Jesus represents the ultimate standard of authenticity and integrity. The pursuit of ultimate truth as seen in Jesus must always be the focus of the church and its members. All too often, as churches develop and grow, they can water down the truth. It seems that the members of the church at Corinth suffered such a crisis of truth and had become proud, arrogant and complacent. The reality is, the authentic pilgrim will always find the way of truth challenging and must constantly bear in mind that they follow their master who chose the way of ultimate truth, a way of suffering and death on the cross. His path was of one who possessed little of this world's material assets and had nowhere to lay his head. Churches and their leadership need to always keep before them the image of the suffering and homeless Jesus in a day where the pursuit of fame, material possessions, luxury and little regard for the truth are rampant in some parts of the Christian church. I dare to live the life of faith, the life of challenge God has planned, of holiness and victory for truth and righteousness to stand.
reality is that when we discover the truth, we are able to see ourselves clearly and honestly with all our strengths and our weaknesses. The search for truth brings with it a degree of self-awareness that allows us to make better decisions, know where we are going in life and find a fulfillment in our living. However, here is the crunch. If we accept that Jesus Christ is the embodiment of all truth, we are faced with a decision. Jesus made it abundantly clear that he came into this world to bear witness to the ultimate truth, to tell us the truth about God and to tell us the truth about life. Consequently, we must accept this without any provisos or we reject Jesus as the ultimate truth. When we come to the place of seeing Jesus as the ultimate truth, we are faced with a decision on two aspects. There is the personal decision, do I accept this fact for myself? And then there is a wider and perhaps a more difficult response. What is my response in a world crying out for truth? and authenticity. I suspect in the present climate where so much of the gospel truth is challenged and rejected, we have been inclined to silence our inner thoughts, perhaps not wanting to upset others who may see life differently. My understanding of biblical teaching is that the church is the replacement for the physical body of Christ and as such it is the repository of his truth. In this age where alternate lifestyles find broad government and media support, our reticence to upset others may well have diminished and diluted our assertion of biblical truth and that is understandable. However, in a world where so many are lost and despairing, does our silence help them? In a world so torn and broken, stand with me in Pilate's Hall. In the hearts of all the people, hear the question asked by all. Hear the voices called in anguish, voices though at times uncouth, voices from the lost and hopeless. Hear their heart cry, what is truth? See the Saviour, bound and bloodied, hounded by an angry mob, yet in spite of hostile rabble, glory and truth around him throb. Hear the voices call in anguish, voices though at times uncouth, voices from the lost and hopeless. And Jesus answers, I am truth. <laughs> 